welcome to Moral High Ground, where I try to talk about what's morally right to you and the rest of the world and everything in existence. <laughs> so, today, I'm going to be talking about um, a certain incident that happened in WW2. And I'm going to be talking about this because, uh, well, it's horrible. It's really horrible. And it's something that people wouldn't expect because World War II has a lot of issues it has to do with uh, Jews and Nazis and a lot of things the Holocaust is just a big part everyone remembers and of course there's other things that get, went on with the United States and then with Russia and America and so on and so forth I go on about all kinds of aspects of war or parts of the war even with dealing with people other races from America that joined the war and so forth, but I'm not doing none of that today. Today I'm talking about an incident that happened in Italy, and I just happened to come across it by looking for like historical war events and things. It's some of my own free time, and I thought it'd be a little interesting to talk about. First, I want to say this might be a little gruesome for some people. It might be something that's disturbing or even emotionally disturbing, and would also bring a lot of hate and anger towards a lot of people and so this is something that needs to be brought up so I'm just saying like as a disclaimer be, you know have caution if you're not gonna uh, want to see anything that's gruesome or anything like that then please turn to something else so anyway let's get started Put that hair down. Turn 50 hours you will be absolute masters of whatever you find beyond the enemy. No one will penalize you for what you do. No one will ask what you're doing. These were the exact words that French General Alphonse Juin recited to the Franco-Moroccan army under his command, authorizing them to commit some of the most heinous crimes against humanity of World War II. Now, stop it right there for a second. If you paid very close attention to what he just said, the French military leader was uh, responsible. He's being responsible when he's saying that they don't, you know, you can't be penalized for your actions during this part of the war. And so it's very disturbing because this isn't Nazis, this isn't Germany that's doing these things that's about to be explained. So it's really messed up. It's a little bit of French, it's a little bit of some other foreign people, but it's horrible. And I can easily imagine something like what was about to be ex exposed here on this show today uh, happening here in the United States. One, because women are totally different now. Their way of thinking is a little different. Some are very liberal crap with the uh, feminist movement, which is pretty much gone and extinct, but they keep talking about it like it's right now, you know, and then it's like the women that run around being, uh, permits, you know, standardly clad, <laughs> is a better word of saying it, and being very, uh, you know, slutty, whorish, whatever you want to call it, very permixed of this, I can't even speak English right now, but yes, this is what's happening, so. We are talking about a dramatic page in the history of Italy, whose fragments are soaked in blood, tears, and unspeakable crimes. Men, women of all ages, and children were attacked, raped, tortured, and murdered. All right. So, I've already recorded something kind of messed up. Uh, once again, this is Moral High Ground talking about what's morally right to you, me, and the rest of the world, and today I'm talking about WW2, talking about an event that happened in WW2 that has something totally different than to do with the Nazis or uh, the Jews and the Holocaust, the things that people know about the most. It's about an incident that happened that people don't really know that much about, and at the same time, it's a tragedy, it's horrifying, but I can see it happening today in the 21st century in the United States of America and other places in the world. Uh, so, 
to go back I'm going to play a little bit of this video that I'm talking about today and this, is, this whole thing is of course is morally wrong what I'm about to play but the thing is the other side and during this war thought that this was okay and it's a freaking tragedy it's, it's sad it's demented and uh, disgusting and uh, like I said before but you guys missed it I guess because <laughs> I messed up but anyway so what I said before was that if you have a weak stomach you might want to not listen to this if you feel that uh, this is you know hateful or anything like that I don't know how to say it in a certain way but if this disturbs you in any type of way I'd rather you have a peace of mind and not listen to it and move on but otherwise learn about something that is hidden from society that needs to be addressed uh, something that is uh, just wrong all around all over the board so with that being said I'm going to play it again from where I was during 50 hours you will be absolute masters of whatever you find beyond the enemy no one will penalize you for what you do no one will ask what you're doing These were the exact words that French General Alphonse Juin recited to the Franco-Moroccan army under his command, authorizing them to commit some of the most heinous crimes against humanity of World War II. We are talking about a dramatic page in the history of Italy, whose fragments are soaked in blood, tears, and unspeakable crimes. Men, women of all ages, and children were attacked raped, tortured, and murdered. And so here's the, that's the part I'm at. This is what I'm getting at, is that this happened in Italy, and it's had to do with the French leader trying to um, pretty much give them freedom to do whatever they want in another person's country. It's Italy, it's not France, but he's saying, hey, you can do whatever you want. You know, and these people <laughs> that they got uh, to help do this crime were free to do whatever they wanted and everything they wanted to do was insult and rape and abuse the people in this town in Italy. And it's even more deeper than that. It's so sad and just demented and pure evil in all sense of the word. And so you get back into it, but this is where it is. And like I said, if it's something you don't want to hear or watch, then uh, just move on. In this video, we will tell you the story of the sinister event known as the Moroccanate. We warn you that the content of today's military history is extremely sensitive. Let's begin. So, yeah, like I said, military history. I came across this because I was trying to learn about, this is the hobby of mine, so, you know, if it ain't about learning about certain gods or God or something like that in history, it's always about war. And that's how I came across this. And so I'm thinking, whoa, this is deep. This is a twist because I've never really heard this before. And I figured it'd be something interesting for uh, people who haven't heard it before. But you, like you said, this is, like the guy said, this is military history. You can look it up on YouTube, find it for yourself, and learn more things that are disturbing in or war. But let's just face it, war is bad. War is, is death all around somebody dies inside which is what this is about apparently more than death itself to destroy someone's character destroy their innocence destroy their way of living and what makes them feel safe and in this case no one was safe and it's all the cost of calling themselves to protect a country for freedom but yet that freedom was stolen from them by their own people that was trying to protect them it's really sick War is always hell. War II was pure hell, especially for women. The appalling history of Nazi military brothels, or the mass rape of German women by invading Red Army soldiers in 1945, is well known. However, despite being equally inhumane, or even more so, 
The brutal sexual assault on Italian women by French colonial soldiers in 1944 is much less known. The Allies remained silent about it because the soldiers involved were their own troops and they couldn't afford to tarnish their heroism narrative. As the saying goes, history is written by the winners. Nevertheless, witnesses do not forget the horrors of those days, and the wounds are far from healing, as seen below. So I'm going to read it a little bit. At night, the city of some young women who had been kidnapped could be heard. We were hiding inside of a gallery with other people. And we heard the women shouting, help, help. You could hear them calling relatives. <laughs> Like tongue twist too much. It was heartbreaking to hear these voices in the night. Moroccanat is the term used to recall the mass rapes and killings committed in World War II after the Battle of Monte Cassino by Allied troops. The French Expeditionary Corps on the Italian front consisted of 130,000 Moroccan, Tunisian, Algerian, and Senegalese men from French colonies in North Africa. See, right there, that's a whole bunch of countries just come together to, to try to call themselves protecting one country. It's like they're trying to be the front line to stop the Germans from coming into Italy. But at the same time, somewhere in there it got twisted, and they're like, okay, this isn't our country, we don't got no penalties of, of any kind of laws, not, not an acts of war, so we can do whatever we want. So pretty much, you know, I mean, they're underneath some kind of martial law. At least the citizens was, you know, not the people coming in from all these countries, Belize, uh, France, and some other groups that came from South Africa, or whatever, North Africa, I'm not sure what they said. But, <laughs> either way, it's just too many people, I'm not trying to be... Um, disgraceful by laughing it's just a thing I do well I'm stupid so anyway it's just this is just like a crazy event and the fact that it was covered up by the people who supposedly think they won how do you think you win when you cause just as much grief and suffering as the people that's done it around the world it's just crazy they just had a small area that they did it in unlike the Nazis that went all over the globe trying to you know dominate uh, countries in every part of the world that they could, these guys only took over Italy in this one spot and dominated it and destroyed those people's lives. I mean, I'm pretty much kind of like paragraphing what's going to happen or what they're going to talk about, but it just like it really blows my mind that this doesn't get talked about at all. Among them were the most fundamentalist known as Gumie. In total, there were 7,833, wearing the characteristic Arab burnous, a green woolen tunic with multicolored bands and rope sandals. They also carried the typical curved dagger, called kumia, on their belts. With What's crazy is the 7,000 troops of these people came in to Italy. 7,000. When you start to hear the numbers of what happened, it still blows your mind that they had all these people that these people, local Italy people, didn't know, you know? And so these people can't be committed for crimes because no one knew who the hell they were. This is even more crazy. With which they cut the ears and noses of killed enemies to make necklaces. That's the crap you get when you watch a Universal Soldier. <laughs> he talks about cutting their ears off as a necklace or some crap. It's weird. Their commander was the ambitious General Alphonse Juin, born in Algeria, who, from being a collaborator of the Nazis, had switched to working for the Allies. See, that might have been the problem right there. You had a sympathizer, pretty much. I mean, yes, he could say he's a collaborator or whatever, and he was a Nazi. Now he's working on the other side, or the you know, Republic, if you want to go, Star Wars type stuff. But at the same time, this guy brought the hate with him. So, 
probably vibrate it off of them. People, some people have energy you can feel the negativity come off of them, you know. You can just feel the shift in their personality, especially if they come off real nice and sweet and stuff. And after a while, you start seeing this negative side, like, whoa, wait a minute. Now, unless the case they're trying to defend themselves and they're saying things like, hey, you know, they're being direct and they're putting up points of facts. That's like, hey, this is what's going on. Then that person's still the good person inside, but they're just not going to take none of your shit. You know, and so in this case, you know, we don't know where this guy's mind is when he switched from the Nazi Germany to working with the French and, and all these other uh, liberated fronts to try to, uh, you know, combat his own people in so many words. By July 1943, with the Allied landing in Sicily, the rapes by Moroccan troops were already a habit. They only briefly stopped when the Allies, advancing through Italy without much difficulty, got stuck in Casino, in the Gustav Line, where the Shermans offered very stubborn resistance. It was French General Juin who proposed surrounding the enemy fortress of Mount Petrella, east of Casino, which the Shermans had left partially undefended. In those areas, only his Moroccan mountain troops could have survived. The Gumiers knew they were a discredited shock force, a kind of Horindu suicide squad that no one respected, so they could behave like beasts with their enemies and prisoners. So what's this the thing is just it <laughs> already hated discredited discredited, you know, and they're in this other country and they're saying they can be out where they want a monster pretty much to all the prisoners and people they captive. But these are people who live in this area. These people this is their country, their town, their families, their friends, you know, their confidence and, and you know, allies, you know. And yet they were attacked by these soldiers that are supposed to have a purpose to defend these people, their homes, and the things they value most. This is the most demented type of freaking, uh, <laughs> it's beyond demented. I don't even think you can come up with a word good enough to explain why someone that's supposed to protect you is trying to destroy you and everyone around you that you know and uh, care for and all that. So it's just a really demented, twisted way of thinking and concept. Uh, you know, I don't know. To me, it's a form of treason and they should have been executed, but... That's why, knowing the savagery these troops were capable of, the Shermans warned the civilian population of Ciotiaria of the danger with an aerial pamphlet drop encouraging them to flee in May 1944. Imagine having to leave your home suddenly because a paper falling from the sky says that your life and your family's life are in grave danger due to the arrival of troops that are supposedly there to liberate you from fascism. Now see, that's interesting. That's, this is the part that, this is why I'm trying to show this video. There's so many things in this video that blows my mind and so many things that make me go, why? And I mean, that's what war does anyway. Why did it even happen? But the fact that you have Germans making pamphlets and flyers and dropping them from planes onto the town to let them know you need to run because the people that are supposed to protect you is going to try to do things to you. Horrible things. You know, unspeakable. You know, ungodly things. And you have no way to defend yourself because you're not a warrior. I, I know back then... It's not even considered a warrior, he's just a soldier. So it's different, you know. Being, people get the terms mixed up in a way because warriors are, you know, out in the woods and stuff and, and things like that. And the old, old, way back when, before, you know, King's Dark Ages stuff, you know. They were walking around every day. It was a survival thing because there's either a dragon or some crazy monster. <laughs> you know, there's wars from every king's uh, soldiers from everywhere. They had to fight, you know, as a warrior, they had to fight to survive and defend and protect. But a soldier is supposed to be the same thing. The only problem and concept of what it does different is that they hold legions to whatever country they come from. And, and they will die for their country. They will even deny working for their country, which means the country actually forgets about them. But in records, they haven't, you know. So, I don't know. It's, you know, like Metal Gear. When Snake walks around, he's supposed to defend or fight for America, but then, you know, America will say, hey, we have no knowledge of you, you know, the type of thing, so they can get the guy out of there or whatever, I don't know what the real scenario of being a mercenary is, but I'll tell you that 
this situation here is, is horrible if the enemy itself is telling you your enemy is already there. <laughs> and that's what that whole thing just meant to me anyway. <clears throat> Many children were evacuated by the fascist National Republican Guard and sent to the colonies of Rimini, but most of the civilian population took refuge in tents and carts on the Pollica Plateau, a medium-sized plateau just below Mount Petrella. However, what ended up happening was much more serious than the worst nightmares of the locales. The villagers still remember with horror some of the scenes they saw and experienced firsthand. Breaking through German defenses reaching Monte Cassino, which would be captured on May 18th, concluding the Battle of Monte Cassino. The next night, a division of thousands of Gumier left their camp, traversed the mountain slopes surrounding cities and villages in the Xiotzi area region. After General Guin's rallying cry, the men felt empowered to unleash hell on dozens of villages in the area, without any kind of control or humanity. And there's a little kid soldier on uh, the side supposed to be helping. He looks like, you know, he's enjoying whatever. So it's just, just, war is just a sick thing. The Moroc Welcome to Star Trek Fleet Command, the ultimate space-based strategy MMO. Embrace your inner commander. Build powerful ships like the USS Enterprise and the Klingon Bird of Prey and boldly go where no one has gone before. Unite with thousands of players, forge alliances, and work together as one unstoppable force. Explore the unknown, learn from the brilliance of iconic Star Trek characters, and uncover the mysteries of the Star Trek universe. Experience exciting monthly updates. Akin soldiers first selected the most beautiful girls from each village to rape them in groups with long lines of soldiers waiting their turn in front of each one, while others held the victims by the wrists and ankles. Many times, these were girls who weren't even teenagers, as this chilling archival material recounts. It's just... wow. It's really jacked up. And I'm just saying it's jacked up because from the dates that they're saying, it was like they had almost a year before this event happened to get the hell out of there. And, and it, I mean, I would ponder something. But then again, it's like going back to the Germans dropping pamphlets and flyers down on them and saying, hey, uh, you, know, you need to get out of your country or town or whatever because, you know, you're in danger. That right there is confusing as hell because is it a trick by the enemy to get you out of there so they can assassinate you? Or are they really telling the truth? So you have to ponder that they might have been really confused about that situation, living in that town, not knowing what's going on, and seeing troops around that's actually supposed to help them. But the sick part here is that they're doing lines, tons of people in lines, over 7,000 troops, and they're taking girls and they're, they're putting them, people in line, have sex with them and stuff. It's just damn right uh, terrifying. And this right here, I have to say, is something a woman would be terrified of, or should be, you know, and I'm not saying it in a positive sense that they should be, I'm saying because this is true evil, this is true uh, threat to women, not just some guy around, you know, and, and, and just, you know, their homeboy, whatever crap it is that goes on nowadays, it, just, it doesn't make any sense to me, if to prevent something like this happening, the normal way that they're doing it to call themselves having pleasure nowadays, should be eliminated as well, so they won't be, uh, not going to say victimized and think it's positive. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, there's a lot of things that's negative, is like positively like nowadays, and so something like this, some woman might have some sick fancy that this is cool when it's really not, and I'm not saying all women are messed up in the head, but we got to admit that women are not this holy, perfect figure. You know, and, and I'm not glorifying men in this sense either. I think every last one of these guys should have been executed. They should have been brought up, the whole generals or whatever should have been brought up for treason. And, you know, for going against the countries that they're supposed to defend. And brought up for rape, murder, and all these other charges. You know, and, you know, 
one thing about WW2, something would have happened, which I thought should have happened. It was a tribunal, should have happened, which was supposed to be a thing of all the nations coming together to convict Hitler. But because Hitler executed himself, <coughs> or you can believe all the other rumors, but for him to execute himself, they automatically got rid of the tribunal. But I think it should have still held for every one of his soldiers and anybody else that did horrible acts of crime during WW2. And it should be held today, you know, for all the acts that happens with all these wars that's going on right now and all the rumors of wars. Well, even the Bible says that in the, in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars. And that's where we're at too. And there's another reason why I thought this would be good to watch because we got wars going on. We don't know what's happening in those countries. We're in our own countries. We're in our own bubble, our own world of manipulated chaos and demented people and just ignorant, dumbass dudes. <laughs> and chicks. <laughs> just dumbass people. And so, yeah. Now I'll quit. We'll get back to this thing. I just want to say something. In an Italian village, the Moroccans raped 30 women and two men, and in Valamayo, two sisters, aged 15 and 17, were forced to sexually satisfy a platoon of 200 Gumiers in an act of unprecedented cruelty and inhumanity. After the horrendous act, having been abused for hours, one of the young girls died, and the other had an incurable psychotic breakdown, spending the last 53 years in an asylum. Now see, that's nuts. That right there, you know, stripped them of the innocence, stripped them of their humanity, and a way to deal with people in society. So that other girl went into a nut house or whatever, and the one that died, it's just, it's just disgraceful. It's just disgraceful sad there's just so many things you can say and it's all going to be the same way because it's, none of this is positive and the thing that makes it even worse is 200 men these two girls you know and it's like it's sad i mean this is world war ii so this isn't recent this is like what almost 100 years ago now because like i guess what was it 44 i don't know they go 40 50 60 70 80 maybe one of them yeah 80 90. <laughs> It's almost 100 years ago now. I can't count with nothing. I'm telling you, my mind's messed up. It's early in the morning. People do it. But anyway, so. <laughs> it's early in the morning. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I can't read. can't count. Okay. But the thing I'm trying to say is, all my ignorance aside, is that this is people from back then that went through all this crap. There's things going on right now. It's like evil doesn't stop. It has to be a, a grace period to some kind of peace. A moment of serenity to where people can get along and get some form of understanding and start to make a new connection, a new bond with other cultures and other people. And I think that's where the problem lies right now is that we can't get over the hump. We can't find that peace, that serenity, that thing that bonds us together and ties us together. And because of that, there's just more chaos on top of chaos, more wars on top of wars. And, you know, the story of God coming back is, is a good thing if that's what's going to unite everybody and I think that probably would you know but even though I still believe in some cases that mankind can do it themselves I also believe that if mankind couldn't do it themselves they need a threat that isn't of human or of this earth some kind some something to be able to not you know, discriminate against races or whatever, but just attack all humans all at one time. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't know that sounds even weird, but if something's a threat to all humanity, then all humanity will come together. And that's my that's my whole purpose for saying bring a threat that's against humans because humans will come together. You're gonna try to save that person. You're gonna give a damn if they're black, Hispanic, Asian, none of that. You're gonna be like, oh, we need this person. You're gonna need another person to help you fight the thing that's trying to destroy all of us. You know, you know, unless you watch a movie and you think some crap doesn't make any damn sense, you know, whatever. But seriously, I just believe these people thought they were in paradise of some kind of real safe protection haven. And then they let these people come in to try to 
protect what they destroyed. And then you can just look at this army that they got here. It's just a massive group of men, you know. And back then, men fought more, more than women did. So it's just, it's just crazy that they took us out of history books, if you will. Otro caso realmente incomprensible es el de 300 soldados aliados franco-marroquíes que se ensañaron con un hombre de 60 años y decidieron violarlo en manada a modo de aleccionamiento. Con eso comenzaron a violar de forma rutinaria también a los hombres de los pueblos italianos. Además de estas vejaciones, los soldados saqueaban las viviendas y robaban todos los objetos de valor. Yeah, I have no idea why it's overlapping this Italian and American thing going on, but I, I kind of remember this now. I did watch this a lot of days ago, but yeah. From the records of the National Association of Civil War Victims, it is evident that the parish priest, Father Alberto Torrio, in an attempt to defend two girls aged six and nine from being abused, was tied to a tree and raped by a man named Tito Torrio. The parish priest, Father Alberto Torrio, in an attempt to defend two girls aged six and nine from being abused, was tied to a tree and raped by a man named Tito Torrio. The parish priest, Father Alberto Torrio, in an attempt to defend two girls aged six and nine from being abused, was tied to a tree and raped by a man named Tito Torrio. The parish priest, Father Alberto Torrio, in an attempt to defend two girls aged six and nine from being abused, was tied to a tree and raped by a man named Tito Torrio. The parish priest, Father Alberto Torrio, we can't hear it, or Italian, whatever. We can't hear the English over there. There was a priest that tried to stop uh, soldiers from raping two girls. And they you know, whipped him and beat him and raped him all night until he suffered and died of his wounds and lacerations. Um, and that's even more messed up. You don't even care if it's a man of God or anything. He was going to attack and destroy, you know. So that's another sick, demented part. And... This isn't something that's a good thing, okay? Now, what's not being said nowadays because we're supposed to be accepting everything that doesn't make sense. But back in the old days or any time in history, homosexuality was used as a way to uh, demean a man, to take away a man's uh, confidence, to make them feel uh, small, um, how can I say? I'm trying to figure out the right word, but I'm on the right page. The whole thing is it's not a thing to glorify, to be proud of. It's a thing that's a humiliation because they're saying you're no different than a woman or any kind of swine or some kind of crap like that. It's very really demeaning back then. Now it's glorified into all kinds of ways and it's supposed to represent some kind of love. And I think it has to do with a lot of falsehood in a way to turn the cheek against God himself because it's a union that's... You know, marriage is a union that's supposed to be of God. And accepting it as a thing of, for homosexuality, it makes a little big of a conflict with Christian people and people, period, that believe in God, you know. And, you know, all praises to women, you know. The motherly thing, the, the best thing, and the most best thing to fall in love with, as long as they ain't crazy, or, you know, ranting all the time, <laughs> driving you nuts, taking you away from what you're talking about, not listening to you, trying to tell you what to do. I go on and on and on, but I'm not going to throw all that crap in there. I'm just, <laughs> just trying to say, okay? It's just, it's just a thing of humiliation and disrespect and, you know, to belittle somebody. I mean, it wasn't something that was glorified. And now it's just, and I'm just saying all this because you're looking at this old clip. And so, with this, you got to think about what the thought process was there, you know. So everybody to them in this country that they were supposed to protect was in their way a bitch is what they're thinking, you know, or, you know, a whore or some kind of worthless thing. And that's why they did what they did. And that's what I'm, I'm assuming anyway. Aceleraciones internas que sufrió. In the neighboring town of Pico, they crucified Gro alongside her sister while forcing the family to witness the grotesque act. So this day, what they say in English is they, these people came in, took a girl, raped her in front of her family, and forced the family to watch them do this. Um, if you didn't hear the English in there. Inhuman stories like these abound, and tragically were the norm as victims. La norma, cómo cuentan las víctimas. Cuando me sucedió la desgracia, ¿no? Se lo juro que yo me miré la de gente. Me hice una espada. Y que volé, me dijeron que no se hacía, me dijeron que no se hacía, ¿no? Y me había una chica de sangre, ¿no? 
El general, el general Charles de Gaulle, a cargo del cuerpo expedicionario francés de neutralidad, y el general Alphonse Jouin, a cargo de las tropas franco-marroquíes, estaban al tanto de lo que sucedía en Chocharia, pero ninguno de los dos hizo esfuerzo alguno para impedir estas atrocidades. So what they're saying, I didn't hear, and I forgot to read that one part, just based out, I don't know. But anyway, so the whole thing is the troops knew, or generals knew, about what's happening, and they were real well informed, but didn't do anything because why would you? Why would you do anything if you're responsible for a bunch of crimes? If you're, if you're a guy that's acting like you're a big shot, they want to be the hero instead of the, the villain. That's what's going on right there. And so they don't want to tell. So why would they? You know, I'd rather be a hero and die a villain. That's the type of situation that is. Incluso, como ya dijimos, Joa alentó este comportamiento. Cientos de pobres civiles inocentes, mujeres, hombres, niños, ancianos e incluso animales eran violados, golpeados, saqueados y asesinados por las tropas coloniales francesas. And even animals. <laughs> it was the bad part. I missed that whole part the last time I watched this. Was that dude, even animals. No one is safe. I'm telling you, no one's safe. Okay, even raping animals. This is some nonsense. This is bad. Okay, so horrible. Even animals. Really? What the hell? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Oh man, you got you got to rub your head. You got to. You gotta think about it. You gotta be like, oh my god, this is horrible. That's horrible. Must be on horrible. That's just straight up wrong. So, man, hopefully they all pass to the next dimension and God judge them all appropriately. So, anyway. Francesas adscritas a los aliados. Boleka reached a peak of bestiality. Secret military reports indicate that girls, boys, and the elderly were raped with particular brutality. Men who reacted and tried to defend their family members and neighbors were sodomized, shot with machine guns, castrated or impaled alive. That's a hell of a combination. Either impaled, shot, castrated, sodomized. I mean, come on. These people, bro. So, if you're going into town, this is what I don't get about this story, too. Another thing that truly bothers me if they're in this town and they're doing all this crap, who the hell are you defending? And, and if you're attacking all these people and you do all this crap, like killing the men and all this stuff they're saying, then who the hell do you think was going to survive? <laughs> and then who were you still defending after you did all this? Like, this isn't right. So, I don't believe no country should go into another country unless the country is actually understanding and respectful to that country. If not, that leads to another other war. I'm surprised this didn't lead to another war. It should have led to uh, World War III right then and there, or kept World War II going. You know, that's the thing I don't get, too. It's just, it just makes more sense that after the war was over, or somewhere in the, but then it gets Mussolini was like Italian, I think, too, so, but he was a Nazi side, so to him this wouldn't matter, or would it? You know what I mean? That's a whole different thing. I don't know. This <laughs> is just, like I said, this video disturbed me or I wouldn't be talking about it. So. Vivos. Those who resisted died as the following testimonies tell. Un godo padre per difendere la figlia la ammazzarono. Sono uno di due. Uno è entrato dentro e l'altro è rimasto fuoco. Mio padre quando ha visto quello che è entrato dentro e allora ha detto, che succede? Ha cercato di no oh boy. Military reports describe the typical methodology of the Gunier. The Moroccan soldiers knocked on the door and if it wasn't open, they would break it down and beat the victims with the butt of the musket on the head. After the person fell unconscious to the ground, they physically carried them about 30 meters from the house and raped them while other soldiers dragged, beat and tied their relatives to a tree to watch everything. The terrified onlookers couldn't offer any help to the victim as they were forced to watch the gruesome spectacle at gunpoint. Many times the victims were underage boys and girls. Just like this report, 
over the years, a lot of documentation and testimonies have surfaced, allowing the reconstruction of the unbearable events. From the numerous documents collected today, we can say that there were at least 20,000 cases of rapes. However, this figure does not reflect reality, as several medical reports from the time warn that only a third of the raped women managed to overcome their unjustified shame and had the courage to report it. Specialist projections maintain that there were a minimum of 60,000 raped women, many of whom suffered abuses repeatedly and by more than one perpetrator. This is just a... Uh, we have this, half of this stuff they're using as historical documents from some movie, and I remember because that woman that was just there with the hair, some movie I watched. I think it might be the one with freaking... Uh, well, maybe the one with Frank Sinatra. This is called... Uh, World War II movie with Frank Sinatra. You gotta check it out. I can't remember the name of it right now, but trust me, it's cool. And, but anyway, so my point is that's something that's crazy. Is the number they just said over sixty thousand. So that means it was not just a little tiny town. It's a town that's almost getting close to being a city, or you know, some small city or something. And yet, that's a large number of people. Large number. I mean, but yet they had 7,000 go in with weapons and stuff. It's not, none of this stuff is a winning thing. And none of it is uh, in the benefit of anybody, except for these soldiers that were just sick in the head, apparently, because they're doing it to animals and stuff, too. So, I mean, it's just, that'd be terrifying. And we probably have a whole, when people talk about mental health and, and uh, you know, traumatic events and uh, what do you call it when, Traumatized, you know, people be traumatized and PSTD or whatever you want, however you want to call it. Every woman and young kid in that village back then in 1944 all have those events. They all have PSD. They all had some form of uh, mental illness because of the event that happened. They're all traumatized. I mean, who wouldn't be? I mean, hell. You probably wouldn't even want to be in that region anymore. If not, even if you did, you want to protect it more than before. It's just something that's really sad that innocence is lost because they're talking about young children more than female women, which is odd to me, but okay. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm heartbroken for those people in the past. And the same thing with right now. We don't know what's happening. There's some. There's videos I've been seeing popping up on X, and I'd be tripping on them where they're showing these guys in the Middle East uh, drug a woman off of a bike, start beating her and crap, and I'm thinking, what the hell she do? But then I had to realize their, their custom of thinking women can't be out in the day without a man. Uh, women have to have a man around them at all times. They can't dress provocative. There's all these different things. And so it was just like, wow, talk about control issues. I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I just laugh at myself. But it doesn't have to be funny because it doesn't make any sense. Even now, you're controlling women and stuff to do things in a different way. I mean, here in America, women have so much freedom, but they don't do anything with it. You know, they like to say the whole thing of doing something with it is just complaining about wanting more rights. I mean, what rights don't you have that a man doesn't have? You have more rights than a man now. You know, and it's like to the point even if a man had went through some of the stuff that females do, they're not believed or they're considered a punk or some stupid crap like that. You know, I had to compare America to this stuff because we have way too many liberties apparently. If something like this was to happen, where would America be at? Where would they stand? How would they how would they come together or fall apart? They I mean, I just don't get it. I'm tr I mean, I have to. You mean? One incident that happens in one part of the world most definitely could happen in another. One negativity, one little drop of poison in a region can affect the whole world. <clears throat> Someone has to stand up and be able to find a way to eliminate that and anything else that may occur and be able to have a backup resources to help the people that are affected. And we only had something stupid, which was COVID. And that didn't make any sense either. Because we, we should have had backup resources then. 
to do things and stuff for us. But so what I'm getting at is this: it's just that this is the hard, most horrible thing there is. What happened to my lighting system? <laughs> Probably went dark on you guys. But anyway, what happened to my lighting system? Why? Anyway, so you know, there we go. Oh, crap. Anyway, so <laughs> back to this. I'm going stupid. The covered medical reports corroborate the brutal nature of the Allied troops, indicating anal and vocal cord lacerations oh, due to the violence of sexual <laughs> attacks. There are also reports of broken teeth to prevent the victim's bites, impalements, and castrations. Especially reserved for men who try to defend their wives, mothers, or daughters, although mutilations for the mere amusement of the Franco-Moroccan soldiers were also widespread. Sex That's just the, the most demented thing. If you're a guy, I can imagine if you have a daughter, you don't want to destroy anybody that's going to your daughter. Okay? And the same thing with your wife. You want to kill everybody. So, that's messed up. They, and in a way, you have to think that they deliberately went to, to do that to get the father to come at them so they could castrate them. That's the most nonsense. I mean, I mean, I'm trying to make words through this whole video. And I'm just biting my tongue and I'm stuttering and, you know, tongue twisters and stuff. And I just made no sense just right now. But I'm just saying it's just hard to, <laughs> it's hard to keep focused when you hear all this crap. It's just really disturbing. And it doesn't make any sense. And I just don't see that much change from 1944 to now. I mean, not to this extent. But in the small regions, small places... In small areas of every city, every town, every country, across the world and the United States, every every state, you know, and it's just terrifying. It's just humans need to quit being predatorial to those other humans. This is why I say once again, it needs to be an outside threat to all of humanity, and quit targeting the opposite sex and all this crap and all this nonsense. You know, why use your your manhood? as a sword <laughs> I just I don't get it I'm trying to figure it out and I just think that this is a, is a terrifying event that should have been in the history books if things were different and they put this in the history books for everyone to know about and it was talk, constantly talked about and you had Italian citizens that constantly talked about that what happened to their people in WW2 current with this event uh, I believe Italians would have the same power and same well, I would say same power I would say the same attention that the Holocaust had that's just my opinion I'm not trying to I know how it is when you say stuff on YouTube about uh, Jewish people but I'm not making nothing against Jews or anything I'm just really saying that I think they would have the same attention and it would be more of a thing of trying to help all victims of World War II, not just uh, one portion of the war. Because we got to think about it, we wouldn't call it World War II if the whole world wasn't affected. So something where we have to look at everyone in the world that got attacked, got raped apparently, or any other stuff, and, and look at them as victims and get them to help and, and even their ancestors, you know. I don't know. Hopefully I'm making sense. But I'm thinking, I'm just what I'm thinking, though. The whole world's affected then and then now. And so we have to find a way not to make this event ever occur again. So you can't hide things from the past. Because the seeds of the future lie buried in the past. And so that's why I keep tying now to then. Okay? So... Actually transmitted infections, such as syphilis, gonorrhea, and other diseases, became another tragedy experienced by the communities, causing thousands of deaths. Moreover, thousands of women became pregnant. Of these pregnancies, only a few survived as women attempted home abortions to erase any evidence of the atrocities they had endured. After the war, the Veroli Orphanage welcomed about 400 unwanted children born from those forced unions. From documents in the Central State Archive, it emerges that white French soldiers also participated in the unrestrained violence, and it was not an ethnic issue. 
Considering that European French represented 40% of the entire body of soldiers, it is limiting to attribute the responsibility for the rapes and atrocities solely to the Moroccan Goumiers. However, this is not addressed by the French people, who disassociate themselves from all responsibility, and when the topic is approached, imply that it was the behavior of a certain population, with a clearly racist focus. An English report reveals... So what's being said there is that the French were one of the main people running around doing these heinous acts against these people. And I was getting my lighting missiles up. What's going on with my lighting here? <laughs> I don't get it. What's happening? But anyway, <laughs> seriously, what's happening? I set this all up. Anyway, so the French were the main responsible of this crap that happened in this place in, you know, Italy. You know, it just, this is nuts that they're not responsible based off of the fact that they use these other people, these other soldiers, Moroccan or whatever they're called, uh, as goats, as the ones that actually did the crime. And that was the racist part. But when it came to them sexually doing things to people, they all were, you know, free to do whatever they want, no matter what their skin color was and things. It's just, it was just a, a perverted, uh, demented thing to happen. It's like these it's like putting all the the SOs together and putting them out there to let them raise havoc and, and uh, chaos. It's really bad. So yeah. It was that soldiers of French origin, with no connection to Moroccan or Algerian roots, raped a vast number of women and girls in broad daylight, sodomized thousands of prisoners and castrated the leaders of the region's villages. The victims of rape ranged from 7 to 86 years old without distinguishing gender, Whoa. social status, or ethnicity. Both children and adults, as well as the elderly, suffered the brutality of the Allied troops. While many have sought explanations for such violence, the reality is that nothing can justify, even partially, what happened. It was... See, so that just... That's pretty much saying what I'm trying to say in a nutshell. Nothing can explain or justify this acts of aggression, these acts of violence, this act of mental depravity. I have no idea how to put it. People defecating and all kinds of crap because they didn't care. It's pretty much taking a dump on these people. <laughs> it's just, I don't get it. It's just, man. Anyway. Simply an act of criminality and savage brutality, inhumanly perpetrated by a group of men given permission to do whatever they wanted, without facing any consequences. The number of deaths is very difficult to calculate, but is estimated to be in the tens of thousands. It is also impossible to count the many women and men who, as a result of the inhuman events experienced, could not marry or lead a normal life leading them to commit suicide or become clinically insane. All victims agree on one thing. Dying without suffering would have been a gift. That's, that's a cold way of going out. It's a bad way of thinking. I mean, most of the people took their own lives. And a lot of them were uh, hospitalized and so on and so forth. I mean, God, this is... Horrifying. You know, a lot of horrifying things happen, even with the Holocaust, the people being burnt. You know, it's, it shows you that mankind is the most worst monster on the earth. If not the most dangerous of all living creatures. At the same time, mankind can be good, can be positive, can change the world in a good way. But I think it takes a certain type of individuals to think differently than the rest of us, or the rest of them. I'm separating myself from the rest of us part because I think differently. But I just think that this whole thing 
It's something that should have never been ignored. It was my first time hearing it. Now, I'm not, I keep saying that this got taken from history because that's what they're saying in the video, and that's something that makes sense to me because I've never heard of this stuff. But at the same time, I have to say it's beyond that. It's just the thing where I really believe that all negative things that happened during this war is the same problem and should have been all addressed, and everybody's victims should have been uh, compensated something in some kind of way, knowledge, to, if anything. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I was thinking of dying, and I thought, I'm going to kill them, I'm going to kill them. As Jesus Christ told me, they brought them to the fragile man, and they did it in such a way. I was expecting my body. I was a girl, but I was expecting il colpo mio proprio ci, ci credevamo che ci ammazzavano tutti quella sera questo crimine di guerra ha stato cagliato durante molti anni The International Red Cross has tried to help with the situation, but the Italian government rejected any assistance because it did not want to strain relations with France by bringing the problem to light again, seeing an international conflict. Neither of the two men in charge of these inhuman and savage troops, General de Gaulle nor General Juan, ever condemned the violence committed by their men. Unleashed soldiers who behaved like violent foxes in the most defenseless enemies. In this tragic and heartbreaking way, we are reaching the end of today's sad and impactful video. We appreciate you sticking with us until the end. So yeah, look up these people, they're called military history, there's other stuff, there's other things that you're interested in their, their show and stuff, so I'm not getting promoted for doing this or anything like that, I just watch this every now and then and I figure you might, well, might be interested in that and the topic of the show, but let's look at the moral issue here, is it morally right for soldiers to go into another country and do what they want to do to those people. Now, yes, this was the whole thing in World War II, and the French pretty much causing chaos in their country, letting women, children, animals, old people get raped. Or, I don't even know if that's the right thing to say, because they beeped it out, and whatever, but you know what I'm saying, and hopefully I don't get any problems with explaining this, because what I'm about to say is the truth. And the truth is, this happens today. America is the one over to Afghanistan and done the same thing in different places and other countries. And so have any other places and stuff. I mean, there was this thing with some female soldier that did something uh, to some guy that was a prisoner. And they, other people were torturing him. Do ungodly things. Treat people like animals and all that. And the same thing doesn't just happen at acts of war. It happens in the legal system as well. When people are incarcerated, you know, they get abused by officers, they get abused by inmates, and no one does anything. The whole thing is a war. Don't think of prison or jail as a, a oh, there's a time I can hang out, I gotta protect myself or whatever. You gotta protect yourself from everybody. Everyone's the enemy, okay? And that's just not just that, it's just in society itself nowadays. The person you could be talking to in a park bench could be your enemy. You know, someone can come get a job and actually be a stalker trying to get to know you. It actually happened to me recently. You know, <laughs> so I'll be like, honestly, you have to, and it's because I do this YouTube podcast stuff. And it's just like, honestly, it's, it's what happens. No one's safe. The only salvation you can find is in God, in your own heart, and your own knowledge of wisdom and protection and so forth. But you have to be more aware and more alert of what's happening around you. You have to have good observational skills to know what is in your presence and what is being taken away in the middle of your presence. And you got to think about this. You know, you got to pretend to be far when you're near and pretend to be near when you're far. That meaning keeping your distance away from somebody to try to reserve them and be close enough to understand what they're capable of and what they can do. All I can say is try to go for the right thing and stay positive and try to separate yourself from the group. I mean, neither if it's good or bad. And not all your friends need to be together in one spot. You gotta understand there's certain friends that don't need to be in certain places with certain people. 
And that way you can protect that friend from those other friends that might be vindictive. And I'm saying this to those of y'all that have a lot of friends. You know, not to have a party where everybody has to be there because some people aren't partying the same way other people are partying. All these things to me is war. So this is a big thing you got to think about. Your everyday interactions in society is a war, an endless battle that you have to fight from the beginning of your birth to the day you die. And with that all being said, this has been Moral High Ground. Hopefully I made sense to you and knowledge gave you some kind of knowledge on things you didn't know before. Well, until next time, peace be with you all and blessings upon you always. Peace.